All right, let's begin our first slot with Mr. Adrian, as he'll be talking about achieving competitive excellence with pre-U programs at MCKL. Take it away, Mr. Adrian. All right. Uh, thanks, Samantha. Uh, so just to check, everybody, all of you can hear me, right? All right, loud yes. and clear. Okay, so okay, so I'm just going to share my screen and my PowerPoint. And uh, what I will do is um, I will be sharing uh, my slide. is actually entitled Achieving Competitive Excellence or ACE with uh, pre-university or pre-U at MCKL. All right. Okay, so the over, um, the my presentation will entail the following. So I'm just going to share a couple, um, the two most prominent programs or iconic programs in MCKL. And first of all, it's the Cambridge A-Levels. Um, and the other program will be the Australian Matriculation or OSMAT, uh, commonly known as OSMAT in MCKL. Then we have, uh, I'll just share a bit about the um, August 2021 intake uh, date coming soon, and as well as uh, what will, if the students or prospective students, if you intend to join MCKL, what would you ex be expecting from perhaps maybe from even now or even August until December 2021, all right? So I'm just going to share a bit about the, um, my, my presentation. I'm just going to start up a bit about who are we, who is MCKL and, and so on. So our legacy is really long. Uh, and eventually we started, MCKL started as a, um, at that point of time, it was still not known as a college. Uh, it, was, it was known as Methodist Afternoon School in 1929. And it was a school established by the Methodist Church uh, for, to allow students who were not able to pursue um, um, education. So it was also dubbed as the School of Second Chance. So um, the, 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 call, uh, the school at that point gave uh, students a second chance to pursue their education. As the school grew, and in 1974, um, the school uh, changed its name and to, became, to become a Methodist high school. And it was also known as the private high school of choice. As, the, as, as years goes by and evolve, then um, what happened was um, there was another change of name from Methodist High School. Then that's where officially it was known as Methodist College Kuala Lumpur in 1984. Then in 1922 uh, and 19, to 19, 1992 to 1999, gradually that's where the college uh, started to, uh, the church decided to separate uh, the two entities. That's where the institution that offers um, primary and secondary school. And then that's where the pre-university or tertiary that is known as, uh, to, uh, that will be off, that, are, that is currently offered in MCKL. So the primary and secondary school were known gradually after that was known as Wesley Methodist School. And uh, they are also our sister institution. Uh, and then uh, in stages, the, the school was moved to Sentul for the KL campus. So we have a few schools across Peninsular Malaysia. Um, and, and all that. And finally, in October 2019, uh, Methodist College went through a, a change of leadership. And right now, we are known as um, um, uh, still Methodist College Kuala Lumpur. Uh, but uh, in terms of the, the so called the glamorous name, it's known as the Institution of Excellence of Life. Okay. So that's just a bit of our legacy. So we are not a new, brand new college, but we have a, a, a legacy of ex, um, excellence uh, across uh, many, many years in, in Malaysia. So, um, just, uh, so I'm going to just share a bit uh, about the Cambridge A-Level or CAL, it's commonly known as CAL at MCKL. Uh, this program has been offered in MCKL since 1983, and it is, it, will, it is still today, still our core academic program. Uh, we are proud because of our track record uh, in terms of uh, achievement for the CAL at uh, Cambridge A-Level exams. So, we are proud to say that uh, to share that our students uh, achieve hundred percent passing rate, and they are also they also gain or achieve top awards not just in the country but across the world. Uh, we are one of the few colleges that has the most diverse uh, uh, choices or, or combination in subject combinations. Uh, I'm very proud to lead a team of very dedicated um, and dynamic team of lecturers because um, um, if, you, if you happen to join us, you'll find that our lecturers are quite, quite, um, quite dynamic in terms of um, their age. I think the average age group is about 30, 32. 
Now, to a lot of um, parents or even prospective students, they think that, oh, young lecturers doesn't know how to teach. But that's the advantage because um, basically for me as, as a lecturer as well, um, when you are, when you, when you, um, our lecturers, when we appoint them, they have to undergo a very rigorous uh, approach of training, particularly in teaching and learning. And as well as we try our very best to incorporate uh, a lot of strategies, uh, learning strategies, uh, much on the student-centered approach there. So now as it as it's goes, um, as now it's still in the pandemic um, and the, the, the college is still running um, almost entirely virtual. So therefore we have received feedback from a lot of students saying that our lecturers were able to carry out or to undertake or even deliver their classes without any problems and all that, okay? Now, uh, we have a, a dedicated uh, pathway uh, for our, or known as German pathway that is available. So I'm going to share that in the second half of my presentation. And we just want to share that for A-levels, it's a 100% external assessment approach, meaning to say you have a exam at the end of your program. Uh, however, we would like to remind everybody that continuous internal assessments and examinations that is carried out in the college it's important because um, whereby we never know that if, let's say, Tashwood, if just in case the exam is cancelled, therefore uh, there may be a change of uh, uh, marking and etc. So we always tell students from now onwards, please pay attention to your uh, uh, performance uh, semester in semester, uh, semester exams in the college. All right. So we just, I just want to share a bit about the achievements over the years. Now, um, I am not. Uh, uh, basically, personally, for me, there's nothing uh, shy to share uh, whether uh, there is a drop because if you can see that along the years, we have been performing very well. Uh, and uh, these are the numbers of uh, achievers, okay, that we have um, basically uh, 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 kind of like coded along the years. So I just want to focus um, uh, the view or I'm going to share the, the statistics a bit based on uh, pre pre-pandemic era and post-pandemic era. So if you look at uh, from 2013 to 2019, uh, our students really achieved very well. I have to say kudos to them because they work hard and our lecturers also work very hard to ensure that the students could actually go to or pursue their studies and universities of choice. But I just want to highlight that in 2020, November 2020, there was one particular, uh, there was the only year that we had one exam and that was in November. Uh, because the June 2020 exams was, uh, was cancelled and therefore they had changed to a predicted grading system. So despite the students who actually uh, joined or even um, uh, undertook the exam during the, 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 the post uh, or even post uh, during the, on the pandemic time, the student, uh, we, we were still very proud in terms of our student has, um, uh, there were still a, a lot of uh, achievers, top in the world achievers, and then we have also top in Malaysia. And of course, uh, high achievers, and as well as we have best across three. So best across three is looking at um, the achievement of three science subjects combined together. So that's how our achievement has grown over the years. Okay. Now I'm going to just share a bit about the diverse subject offerings. Uh, I will not basically go through the specific offerings of which intakes, which subjects, and all that. But if you look at it, uh, we have one of our uh, very core, uh, our subjects is uh, very diverse in terms of we have very uh, strong uh, offerings in sciences, especially, and also uh, humanities or even social sciences. Okay, now there are three additional uh, subjects that or subjects that we actually are very proud of that perhaps maybe MCKL will be or we are the only institution that offers it. First of all, it's German language. Uh, at AS level. Then we have the Cambridge IPQ, which I'm going to share more later with, with you. And of course, we are the only institution in Malaysia that we offer at Divinity, all right, uh, for, for AS level. So in 2023, this subject will be uh, renamed as Biblical Studies, okay? Right, so basically my, my uh, when students ask, okay, Mr. Adrian, what will be the best subject combinations um, uh, to study. So one of the things I will ask all the prospective students is what is the choice of your undergraduate course that you would like to pursue? And once, if you know from there, uh, what is your choice, then basically we will recommend you the subjects uh, combinations, okay? So I'm just going to show this um, uh, uh, list, okay? So the, the subjects here are basically categorized into four areas or forced uh, uh, areas of study that is common 
are eventually selected by MC Health students, but they are not exhaustive, meaning to say, oh, I, I need to take all the five or six, no. So you can actually uh, combine based on the, uh, the pathway that you would like to choose. So if you intend or if a student intends to pursue um, health sciences or even life sciences, uh, for example, medicine, med, uh, medicine, pharmacy, and dentistry, et cetera, uh, these will be the four subjects that will be, will be highly recommended. Okay, and in MCKL, this is the, um, um, the, uh, the choice, uh, the most popular choice of, of combination for students who like to pursue health sciences and life sciences. Now, okay, if, um, if you intend to do physical sciences, for so physical sciences entails uh, engineering, actual science, or even architecture or field design and etc. So this will be the combination of subjects that, that is recommended, all right? Then uh, one of the things we also realized that um, the, the, the choices or the option of students wanting to do computer science or IT, okay? So this will include cybersecurity, uh, internet of things, uh, data science, etc. cetera. Um, it would be great if you can, uh, if you opt for such combinations. And the last but not least for students who are opting for commerce, arts and humanities, uh, there are many subjects that you can combine. So we will always tell the students to eventually uh, choose, select um, the course or uh, the combination of the subject so that you would ease your requirements when you pursue um, your, your, your tertiary uh, program or undergraduate program in universities, okay? So I'm just going to go through the, <clears throat> the additional one, which will be the Cambridge International Project Qualification or CIPQ. Uh, we are one of the very few CIE centers or uh, centers in Malaysia to pilot. Eventually, it was known as uh, uh, CRQ. Then there was a change of name. And basically, this, uh, uh, this subject, uh, this paper, right, is the aim is to kind of uh, enable students to develop a research project on a topic of their own choice, reflecting their academic interests. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you, if you are aware, when you pursue your undergraduate studies, and one of the very important um, kind of core subjects that most universities prescribe, I understand, uh, during the undergraduate uh, year will be a research, uh, research methodology. And uh, what happens is right now, uh, because in that particular, uh, just, just maybe a, a, a quick overview of that subject, um, students, you will learn how to conduct research, uh, whether uh, primary, secondary, and all the approaches of research that you will learn. But uh, in MCKL, students, you can opt to take this subject, all right? You can, you can take this subject as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a subject of its own. And so that the, this allows you to give, kind of uh, give you a, kick, uh, a head start of what a research is and all that, all right? Um, normally, you will be uh, tutored or you will be guided by a lecturer. And that lecturer will eventually assist you in, in, in building up or basically construct your project um, uh, in this point, okay? So just to share with you some of the uh, former research topics that was actually undertaken by MCKL students. Uh, if you can see, it's quite, it's quite a, a, a mouthful, but uh, it, it ranges from physical sciences approach to even uh, life sciences and even to psychology approach, humanity side, and, and all that, all right? So we, we, we pride ourselves where students can actually opt for, for this subject as well. Okay, now for the students, uh, we also realized that there is a growing interest for, uh, for prospective students or students opting for this pathway. Uh, that is known as the German pathway, okay? So we collaborate with um, uh, uh, a party called German Educate, and this is to allow pre-university students if you intend to progress your tertiary studies in your Germany, okay? Now, the reason for students to opt for this pathway, right, or to pursue your undergraduate studies in Germany is because most of the um, universities, uh, especially the public universities in Germany, they don't impose tuition fees to international students as well. And a lot of times we, uh, a lot of students, they think, that, oh, we, you know, uh, yes, our students actually commonly select or uh, prefer um, universities that is the, the, the top four, there is the um, UK, of course, then you have the Australia, New Zealand and US, etc. But um, Germany now we see that there's a very big interest for, for Malaysian students uh, because uh, universities in Germany is considered world class and they are one of the, in terms of they are recognized internationally and as well as they are, uh, uh, they, they, they actually uh, adhere to a higher, uh, higher standards in the global uh, higher education, etc. Uh, arena. Now, 
Uh, German universities, right, they have a very strong, um, their offerings are very much centered on technical and vocational. So you will find that there's a lot of um, uh, students, MCK students who pursue, uh, who opt for this pathway. Uh, they have a very strong uh, uh, interest in research and innovation. And um, I just, I'm happy to share this, uh, that um, we have actually collaborated with German Educate for, for quite some time. And we are proud to announce that the very first cohort of the students who opted for this pathway, the one pathway in MCKL, uh, have completed the entire program uh, because the students have to do German language proficiency exams as well. And right now, if I'm mistaken, they are actually in Germany uh, waiting for uh, their results for their admissions to German universities. 100% uh, pass in terms of their exams and in terms of their language proficiency. All right. So we will we will we will share more when we get uh, when we have obtained more information on the German pathway. Okay. All right. Now I'm just sharing this uh, for everybody's information, but there is a currently a restructuring uh, for the offering of uh, Divinity, and at the moment we are also proud that uh, we are the only center in Malaysia that offers Divinity uh, in in Malaysia. And for this paper is also open to all students. And, um, uh, and we would just want to share that for the last, uh, for the many, many years that we have offered this paper, we have always been one of the top, okay? Our students have always been one of the highest achievers in, in terms of uh, this paper. So we just also want to share that um, this paper is currently undergoing a, a restructuring in terms of the offering. We want to, because in the past, it was delivered in a very traditional approach. So right now we are working towards uh, a more uh, blended and even hybrid approach, however entirely online um, for, for delivering the subject. So we were just going to share this with you um, along uh, as we go along, okay? And, and all that. Okay, so I'm just going to continue by uh, sharing the next uh, pre-university program. So the ones that, that you have heard are all the Cambridge A-levels. And today, it's uh, the next part here is actually the OSMET and MCKL. So OSMET stands for Australian Matriculation. So it is actually a year 12 qualification uh, by the Australian government and with worldwide rec recognition, including Germany. All right. Um, so just maybe I will give an overview, uh, a very brief overview of uh, typical and equivalent year 12 Australian education um, uh, qualification. So in Malaysia, most uh, there are some institutions that offer the SAS, S-A-C-E, so no, they are known as the South Australia Certificate of Education. Then you have the VCE, Victorian uh, Certificate of Education, and as well as the High School Certificate for New South Wales. So in MCKL, we offer the Western Australia Certificate of Education, all right? So uh, the map actually shows where the territories in, in, um, in, uh, in Australia, all right? So for the OSMAP, it, the, the whole examination and assessment system is very different than the A-levels, okay? So where A-levels uh, follows kind of um, the conventional approach of, of grading, so you have the A, A star, A, B, C, etc. But in OSMAT, uh, basically the students will be so-called uh, 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 evaluated based on ATA, all right, Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank. Okay, so it's it's in a it's it's quite um uh, not to say complex, but I'm not going to really go to the details. But uh, to actually know your ATA score, it is calculated by adding up the subject scores and rank total scores against each other students in the state. Okay, so um the assessment methods for OSMAT it's based on uh, two approaches or two components. So you have the 50 the first 50 percent, it is known as the school-based assessment, okay? So this first 50 percent uh, will be uh, the assessments, right, will consist of those assessments that is assessed internally in MTKL, but it is moderated externally, all right? And the other 50% will be a examination. Uh, we call, we normally address this examination as an ATA examination. And it is, uh, uh, it, the, the examination or the paper itself will be set by the School Curriculum and Standards Authority of uh, or SCSA of Western Australia, okay? So your assessments, right, will consist of a lot of, uh, a lot of components. So you have class tests, lab reports, for those of you who take sciences, then you have mock exams, in-class assignments, presentations, etc. All right, or that first uh, 50 percent of all that. Okay, so for the subject combinations, we offer quite a diverse uh, uh, combination as well. Uh, I will also not uh, uh, 
uh, detail which are the subjects that will be offered, but uh, perhaps my colleague uh, in the enrollment and admissions team will, will give you a better idea of when um, some of these subjects they are, they are offered. Okay, so we have also the very popular sciences combination and as well as um, the arts and humanities combination and as well as the uh, hybrid or, or mixed mode uh, combination. Okay, so you have the sciences and a bit of arts and all that. Okay. So for ATA, right, uh, as I said just in the beginning, it is um, the calculation is based on the average of four or five base, uh, your best subjects, okay? So if let's say a prospective student, you would want to, uh, um, uh, uh, to enter to an Australian university or to continue your studies in an Australian university, um, it is best if, you, if a student can achieve at least ATA 70. Okay, for each subject, uh, because it is considered achievable or good enough. I, I use this term achievable or good enough so that um, it is kind of like, uh, 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 okay, you are safe to enter or you may, uh, most probably you will highly, uh, most likely you will receive an offer from an Australian university. Okay, but if, if a student, you intend to pursue very highly competitive courses, okay, or even considered for a scholarship, uh, we would normally recommend students, if you can, um, at least to achieve an ATA of 85% or 85 and above, so that you can actually guarantee um, an admission to that course, okay? But again, this differs from universities to universities. So just to showcase the progression of our students, um, in our latest on the last exam, uh, the highest ATA achiever in MCKL was 98.95% out of 100. And what we did was rather than we show you the whole actual result, so we actually classify based on four tiers. So if your ATA is above 90, uh, ATA above 80, ATA above 70, and ATA above 60. So if you can see, most of our students, right, they are... They are, they are basically uh, above that percentile of actually can admit to an Australian university, okay, and all that. Uh, yeah, so that's basically the, the results uh, uh, of ATA uh, for MCKL, okay. So uh, I'm going coming to almost the end of the, the presentation, but I just want to share a bit about some latest development uh, because of the pandemic, some, some of the students have actually asked uh, us and all that. So we just want to share that our um, intake dates, right, uh, will be on the 16th uh, of August. That will be the orientation. And um, I think the commencement will be somewhere on the 17th of August. All right. So we just want to share with all of you uh, that th this will be the, um, the last intake for, uh, for the year in 2021. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to share what would you expect when you join us in MC, uh, join MCKL in August to uh, August 2021. All right, now because um, right now, especially in Malaysia, we are still um, um, observing the um, the whole development of the entire pandemic process and as well as the vaccination. I hope all of you have already registered. Um, currently, right now, uh, for students for August intake. Uh, your classes or lectures will all be conducted entirely online uh, from August, okay, to December 2021. Now, for science-based subjects, right, or papers, um, students, you will be required to return to the campus to undertake your practical in November or to December 2021. Uh, we have kind of worked on that schedule for all the students uh, to come and so that uh, uh, when will you be coming back and we will inform you ahead of time. So for our station students or even students, uh, prospective students from uh, Sabah and Sarawak, you will be actually uh, be informed earlier so that you can plan your return to the campus and all that, okay? Now, if all eases, uh, if the M movement control order or in, in whatever case that is, it eases and is lifted, uh, we will... Um, move our lectures or our lectures and classes will all be delivered in a hybrid approach, okay? Meaning to say there will be in, in a way that at least one or two, two days of face-to-face -face in the campus and at least three days, uh, the remaining days of online delivery. 
Okay, now we want to also assure you that when you return to the campus for the hybrid approach, uh, we will make sure that your timetable, that when you come and return to the campus, it will be a full day, not scattered around the whole week. So for example, um, you may find that in your schedule, okay, maybe you will only be required to come back to campus on let's say Monday and Tuesday. Okay, full day, Monday, full day, Monday, full day, Tuesday. And the next three days will be entirely online. Now, why we do this is because we want to minimize the movement of students. We have to ensure everything is all uh, 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 safe for not just the staff, but for the students. And all your classes, all your uh, arrangements of your seating has all be arranged based on social distancing measures, including the science lab. All right, science practicals and laboratory based sessions will be all conducted with social distancing measures. So, you students, you'll be required to wear goggles, you're required to wear face masks, you're required to wear your lab coat, and as well as you're required to wear um, uh, uh, gloves throughout the whole sessions. Okay, now we also want to assure all students that at this point of time, all examinations, external examinations, they are governed by international uh, bodies or professional bodies, uh, such as CAIE for A-levels and OSMAT will still be carried out this year, okay? Uh, because they have given the assurance that these exams have to go on. And what we will do is if there is, or if there are any changes of regulations or eventually um, the, the uh, offering, we will inform the students accordingly on what to do, all right? So, of course, all this plan that we will be, um, um, or that we, I have shared, will be subject to prevailing local and governmental advisory and regulations outlined by, outlined by authorities such as uh, the National Security Council, then the Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia, and et cetera, all right? So, um, for if you want to know uh, just a bit about how we can deliver our online learning, uh, we're very proud because um, we use uh, Microsoft or uh, um, as uh, Microsoft has actually recognized us as one of the very uh, 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 kind of, uh, they, they, they recognize us because we have modernized our teaching and learning. And because of that, so if you want to read more, if you have a mobile phone, you can scan the QR code over that site. Um, so we are very proud because Teams is not just used as a video conference, but we have actually reached to that level to use it, uh, to adopt it as a learning management system, okay? And all that. So um, just maybe give you some heads up. Uh, uh, we are heading to Penang, uh, or eventually it is already there. To, uh, and the pictures that I'm showing you is just, just not really updated, but now the campus looks very different. So this is one of the pictures that I had. Um, so we are trying our best to ensure that the, um, the, the campus in Aikert and Penang will be operational by, 20, by the end of 2021, okay? Subject to now um, seeking for approvals and all that. So because of the movement control, the, now at the moment, there's a slight delay, uh, especially furnitures arriving and uh, retrofitting the campus with with all the other parts of it. So the campus is already almost ready. It's about 90, 90%, 95%. Now it's just remaining. Now we just want to fit it with all the, um, the furnitures as well as all the AV requirements, uh, equipments and et cetera and all that. Okay, so with that, uh, those are my, that is my presentation. So yeah, I, when I look at this picture, maybe just to share, it's, it was uh, taken in 2020. That was all before the, 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 the pandemic happened. Uh, it's, it's quite happy to see all our colleagues here uh, because we have not had uh, everybody come back to campus at one time at that. So, if, if, um, so with that, I end my presentation. Um, thank you very much and see you in August 2021. Thank you so much, Mr. Adrian, for your sharing. Now, let's go through some questions um, from the parents and also from our viewers. Yeah. Um, the first yeah. question is, what is the difference between a pre -U, doing a pre-U program and a foundation program? Um, you know, if, if some students, they're unsure of what they actually want to do after their SPM or IGCSEs. All right. Okay, very good question. This is quite a common question um, that we receive, in fact, actually, uh, Samantha. So if you, if you find right, um, uh, foundation programs are mostly designed by, uh, by a university uh, in order for students to proceed to, the, uh, uh, to, to progress 
or it is a pathway that is designed for students to enter that, uh, that particular that university that they have opted. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, MCKL, we are not, um, um, not to say we do not have a foundation program because we are still a college per se. Uh, but if we are a university, uh, which we are working towards that, we, uh, we hope that uh, we will have a foundation program. So in terms of the um, assessments and all that, yes, we agree that somehow, somewhere to a certain extent, some students will say it is so much easier because it's designed by the university for students to continue the pathway. So it's kind of like you may get a guaranteed entry to the university of your choice. Um, how, uh, and foundation is shorter. So just to let you know, most of the foundation programs are offered uh, at a one year, yeah. But for us as a pre-university program like uh, A-levels or even OSMED, it differs uh, most of the time is one and a half years. Uh, OSMED, we have one year program as well. Uh, and basically what happens is those, uh, that this pathway, these pathways are generally, because they are prescribed by international um, uh, bodies, examination bodies, assessment bodies, so in terms of recognition, it is, it is kind of recognized globally. So um, especially for A-level. So if you intend to pursue overseas, then we will recommend you to actually pursue um, A-levels or even OSMED. And uh, that's something that we, we want to be, uh, 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 be very clear. We just want, also want to share that, yes, duration is longer, but I, can assure, we, I personally can assure you that you know, by the time you enter university, so you have, you are much more prepared because I think the system itself is quite rigorous uh, in a way that it will assist you to prepare yourself when you enter um, the university. All right. So they have more so, options yeah. after doing a pre-U. Yes. Course. All right. Definitely. Um, of course, for A-levels, the, the selection of your subjects is, is the most important aspect. Uh, but also depends on your ability, ability uh, your, your, sorry, your capabilities in, in achieving. Uh, so if, for example, if you intend to, to continue your studies in, um, in, a, in an Ivy League uni or in U, US, for example, or in the Russell Group in UK, so all these top uh, 100 unis around the world, etc. So you may require a much more, um, com your results must be, an excellent, uh, must be excellent or must, be, must reach at least certain standards to enter those units, all right? So this is, this is the beauty of the pre-university program. That's why we still have quite a number of students who, who, who decide opt or opt to do pre-university because of that recognition, yeah, and that, uh, that progression. Right, thank you. My second question, um, it's also relating to pre-U. Um, okay, so now, what are the major differences between you know, the assessment methods? Because we do have students who um, they, they're really unsure what they want to do, whether they want to do OSMED or whether they want to do A-levels or the German pathway. So which one would you recommend uh, for them? Okay, all right. So that's also quite a common question that we are uh, personally uh, we always being asked. So my recommendation, first thing first for prospective students, if you're listening to this, please do not opt for the program based on your friends or your peers who select, okay, that program, okay? It means that if my friend so, uh, opt for, or has opted for A-levels, or my senior in school has opted for A-levels, I would want to do A-levels as well. Uh, First of all, you have, to, because in, in Malay, there is a very famous proverb uh, called tepot dada tanis lera, means you have to know what are your strengths, your weaknesses in order to pursue a particular program. So we know that both programs uh, in MCKL are assessment based, okay? But we also have to be uh, very clear to you that it is not an easy program because some of the students think that, oh, I have less exams, therefore it's easier. The answer is no. All right, um, even OSMED, 50% of your assessment comes from class, but the intensity and the frequency you are being accessed, your assessment is higher, sorry. Your assessment is higher because the 50% is important to show and demonstrate your progression, okay? And of course, at the end of your program, then you have the ATA exam. That's the other 50%. But for A-levels, your, your progression, yes, and, uh, the college will still have um, uh, mid-semester uh, 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 college-based assessments, internal assessments to ensure to monitor your progression. But it's also important that 
while working towards your AS or even to your A2 level. Therefore, it is important to actually use uh, or to benchmark your assessments as a monitoring or benchmarking uh, uh, a standard so that you know, okay, what am I good at? What am I, uh, oh, sorry, what am I, uh, my, my mastery of this particular subject of paper is, is at this level or that level. So it's very important for students to consider that. Okay, because uh, uh, I did give a real example. A lot of students want to go to, okay, let's say they want to go to Cambridge or even Oxford. All right, top tier uni. But my question is, if you are, are you able to achieve that? Because we know some students, um, uh, a, a very small group of students, they, they are, because they are very clear. And not only that, they, in terms of academic achievement, they, they know. But when it comes to, particularly to, to real, reality, whether you can do that or not, we will always want to ask you this question. So, uh, but I can assure you, our lecturers will go all the way out to assist you um, and support you in your learning and teaching. And we find that don't be shy. Don't, don't be shy in front of your class because right now the, the challenge is classes are all conducted online. So it is unlike face-to-face -face where you can start to see your classmates, your lecturers and all that. But most importantly, we need, we need you to ask. And if you have any problems, please reach out. We have so many avenues uh, for students to help. Uh, to help you. So you have to eventually acknowledge your strengths and acknowledge your weaknesses and it's fine. It is nothing wrong because as you progress later, then you'll be, you'll be a good uh, benchmark and yardstick for you to measure your, your abilities and capabilities. Okay, all right. So right, these are you. my tips for students on that. All right, thanks, sorry, thanks, Samantha. Sorry. <laughs> right, no, no. Okay, so okay. I have um, questions relating to German pathway. Um, if yeah. a student were to do, let's say, engineering in Germany, because you know, Germany, um, it's very good for engineering. We have the best, uh, you know, more uh, well, well, no. car companies from Germany itself. So, um, would these students who do the German pathway do they actually need to do like internship before they actually start their degree in Germany? Okay. Uh, this you know something? is something I I I I have to admit that I'm not that sure about the internship part. Uh, but I can what we can recommend you is um, I think there will be a, another session uh, in, 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 in coming soon that we will have um, Jim and UK our colleagues to, to eventually uh, share a bit more on that. Uh, but for those of you who are interested in the German pathway, I just want to share with you that our students, most of the students who actually opted for the pathway, they opt for engineering program because it's well known. And, uh, and they are also, the, the internship, if I'm mistaken, is offered, I think, during your, your, your undergraduate studies. A lot of practical approaches because, um, you know, um, um, that, that's where the, your experience, your first, your first time experience of actual projects and actual um, uh, immersion of the entire experience you're studying in Germany, you will encounter at that point of time. So I apologize if at this point of time, I, I think I, I, I'm not clear with that, but uh, I'll be happy to direct this uh, uh, question to my colleagues or to our colleagues in Germany, okay? So that they will be able to furnish you more information on that, all right? So for those of you who want to know more about German and UK and German Pathway, uh, I have actually told them that there will, um, there will be a session plan. So maybe just, uh, we will just update everyone when the time comes, all right? 